Hi everybody, I'm Nor'easter Nick and I'm your local South Jersey meteorologist. I was invited by your teacher to read a book to you and I am so excited to be here. I figured I would choose a subject that I know a little bit about and make it fun for everybody. So for today, we are going to be learning about the weather. Look how cool that picture is, isn't that? Lightning and a big thunderstorm coming through that area. All right, enough jib jabbering. Let's get started. The weather can be sunny, rainy, windy, or snowy. Every kind of weather is happening somewhere in the world right this very moment. This is a snowstorm in New York. Clearly, there's no snowstorm out there right now, but it happened just a couple weeks ago. Remember that big blizzard? We were like up to here in snow. Yeah, that was fun. The weather is caused by three main things, heat, water, and air. The sun gives out heat, which warms the earth. Water makes clouds and rain, and it also makes fog, hail, and snow. Air is always moving around. That is what makes the wind. Have you ever been outside and you're like blowing all around and you're like, whoa, no, I'm gonna turn into Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, you guys aren't old enough. You'll get the reference later in life. The earth is wrapped in a thick blanket of air called the atmosphere. This is where weather happens. From space, the atmosphere looks like a hazy blue ring around the Earth. And all these white swirls, those are the clouds. Such a pretty look. Can you imagine being up in like a shuttle looking at the Earth, seeing all the clouds? Water is always moving between the sea, the air, and the land. This is called the water cycle. So the sun warms the water in the sea, and it turns it into a gas that you can't see that gas rises into tiny droplets of water making clouds. Then those tiny droplets bump into each other and join together to make bigger drops. When the drops of water become heavy enough, they fall as rain. How many of you like rain? I'm not the biggest fan, I'd much rather have snow. But sometimes it's fun to, I don't know, go out and dance in the rain. You ever do that? That's one of my hobbies sometimes. Different types of clouds mean there will be different kinds of weather. White, puffy, cumulus clouds usually mean the weather is going to be good. Stratus clouds cover the sky. This means that it might be foggy or drizzly. So, yeah, there are a lot of things that I look at even outside of all the technology available. Go outside, look up at the sky. Oh, cumulus clouds. That must mean that high pressure is in control of our forecast. Then you've got these wispy cirrus clouds. They are high up in the atmosphere, and this means that rain or snow may be coming later. And something else that's interesting about that, have you ever been outside at night in the full moon and you have this ring around the moon? That's because warm air is coming into the higher levels of the atmosphere, and it makes this like rainbow around the moon. And you know that the very next day it's either going to rain or snow based on the, the temperature. Big cumulonimbus clouds mean that there may be a thunderstorm. Guys, look how scary that cloud is. But really, I mean, it's not that scary once you understand weather. But the thunder can be loud, right? When tiny water droplets form close to the ground, this is called fog or mist. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in California. It is foggy there most of the time. It really is. I just went last year and we couldn't see two feet in front of us. When air is very cold, the water in the clouds freeze to make tiny ice crystals called snowflakes. Most snowflakes have six points. No two snowflakes are exactly the same shape. This is what makes snowflakes look like when they are in a microscope. That's what they look like. Isn't that cool? Whoa, look at that. The book is disappearing because this background, well, it's not technically real. Icicles form in snowy weather when the sun shines onto the snow or on roofs or trees. The snow melts, water drips down into the cold shade where it refreezes. More water slowly drips down and freezes, forming lots of icy fingers. Now, can you imagine walking around with icy fingers? That's a little scary, right? Sorry, could you say that again? No, I can't say that again, Siri. Okay, well, my watch is on the fritz. Hopefully, you're you're listening to me read about the weather, we're gonna clear you, okay. Ugh. Anyway, 
electric skies. Oh, this is my favorite part. I love thunderstorms. Thunderstorms happen when cumulonimbus clouds, remember I showed you those, those scary looking clouds, but they're really not that scary, form in the sky. Strong winds inside the clouds swirl rain, snow, and hailstones up and down. And this process happens over and over again. And sometimes the, the hailstone can start off like that. And then it ends up like the size of a baseball. That's why when there's thunderstorms coming, you really have to uh, pay attention to what the forecast is and get inside as soon as you can. This makes electricity build up. It escapes down to the ground as flashes of lightning. Lightning sometimes hits trees and buildings on its way from uh, the cloud to the ground. This type of lightning is called forked lightning because it looks like a fork. So if you're sitting there, you know, uh, eating your dinner or your breakfast or your lunch and you're using a, a fork, you have the, the handle and then all these little areas that go out. Thunder is the sound that lightning makes when it heats up the air around it. You always see lightning before you hear thunder because light travels much faster than sound. So you'll see the flash and then you can wait a few seconds and you can see how far the storm is away from you. So for every second, it's about 10 miles away. Great balls of ice. Hail forms inside giant thunderclouds, so you often get hailstorms at the same time as thunder and lightning. Water droplets get blown up into the cloud and you get these big gusts of air. The droplets freeze, they drop down and a layer of water forms around them. The hail is blown up to the top of the cloud and then the layer of water freezes. This happens again and again and again until the hailstone gets so heavy that the uh, air rushing into the cloud can't sustain it anymore. And then it comes way back down and you end up with a, a hail situation. And that's not good for your car. If you're out on a bike and you're getting hit in the head, that's never a good thing. So if we're forecasting thunderstorms with potential hail, you obviously want to get inside. If a hailstone is cut in half, its layers look a bit like those of an onion. This is the biggest hailstone ever recorded. It fell in Nebraska in 2003. It is shown here at just half its actual size. How cool is that? Wild wind. So we told you the wind is always moving, right? It happens when hot air rises and cold air rushes into its place. The strength of the wind is measured on a scale of one to 12. A force two breeze dries clothes on a clothesline. A force five wind blows the leaves around the trees. A force nine wind is a severe gale and it can blow tiles from roofs and a force 12 is a hurricane and it can destroy homes. Hurricanes are not fun to be in. A hurricane begins when hot air rises quickly over the sea and starts to spin. This causes a violent storm with heavy rain. When a hurricane reaches land, huge waves and strong winds batter the coast. I grew up around Atlantic City and I've seen my fair share of these and they can be uh, very, very concerning. The ancient Greeks believed that the wind was the breath of the gods. Can you imagine all the way up there somewhere on a cloud sitting, somebody's going like, <sighs> and that's the wind. Tornadoes are violent whirling winds. They are sometimes called twisters. A tornado is like a giant vacuum cleaner. It sucks up things from the ground. Now inside the thundercloud, you slowly get some spinning going on, right? The air spins faster and faster and the cloud begins to take shape. Warm air is sucked into the cloud. It becomes shaped like a funnel. The cloud touches the ground and as it moves, it destroys everything in its path. Twisters can sometimes suck fish and frogs out of ponds. Can you imagine if you're friends with a fish and all of a sudden a tornado comes through and, oh no, there goes my fish. Scientists measure the weather and tell us what they think the weather will be like. Wind speed and rain are measured at weather stations all over the world. Special planes fly into the clouds to measure how much water is in them. Satellites in space take pictures of clouds of the storms on Earth. Weather balloons are sent high into the sky to measure the air temperature. The scientists put together all this information and make a weather forecast. So there are multiple steps involved in what I do. This is the process, except I'm not out there flying on a plane. I let the Air Force do that, and then I take their information, and I formulate that into a forecast. Weather doesn't just affect people. It affects the way animals behave, too. For example, 
The fur of a snowshoe hair changes from brown to white for the winter. The hair can't be seen in the snow by eagles that hunt it. It's like a little bunny rabbit. We're not talking like the hair on your head. Every year, some birds fly a very long way to escape the cold winter. Some animals, like dormice, sleep through the long, cold winter. That is called hibernation. When it gets colder and colder, the dormouse eats lots of fruit and seeds. It makes a snug nest underground or finds a tree to sleep under. Six months later, it wakes up ready for the summer ahead. Some places have extreme weather that not many people or animals live. The Sahara Desert in Africa is one of the hottest and driest places on Earth. Camels can live here because they can survive without water for a long time. Under the hot sun, desert rocks become so hot that you could fry an egg on them. Would you want to be in a desert? I don't like the hot, but I also don't like the extreme cold. In Antarctica, well, that's the coldest place on Earth. Penguins are one of the few animals that are able to live there. They huddle close together to keep warm in the winter. In some parts of the world, the weather makes odd things happen, like even odder than in New Jersey. Some things, uh, some people think that strange clouds look like spaceships. Those are called lenticular clouds and they form around mountains. Red raindrops sometimes fall from the sky. Winds pick up red sand from African deserts and carry it across the sea. The sand mixes with droplets of water in the clouds and makes it rain red. A hailstone with a turtle inside once fell from a thundercloud in Mississippi. What? That poor turtle must have been frightened. Many scientists think that the Earth's atmosphere is slowly getting warmer. The air in the atmosphere acts like a blanket to keep the Earth warm. When fuels like oil and coal are burned, lots of gases are released into the air. The atmosphere is warmer because the gases trap heat from the sun. As the earth warms, we have less and less cold and snow. And that is the book of weather. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you really like all the other books that you hear the other guest speakers read you. Have a great day, everybody. And don't forget to follow me for all your South Jersey weather. Take care.